The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the November 7th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what the buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much more important than that. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. All the indices in the uh, green Uh Spot volatility index is not. It's flat right now. Dow's up 241, eight tenths of a percent. S&P up a half a percent or 15 points. The uh, leader percentage wise to the upside, it's the semis. They're up one and four tenths percent. The tranny's up one percent out there. You've got uh, gold back 27 bucks, silver down uh, 57 cents out there. That's off a little bit, uh, three percent plus. Uh, Lights we crude is up a buck 30. Natural gas down three cents, leading the charge to the upside. Dexcom is up 45 bucks or 29 percent. Google's up 29. Nevro Corp is up 22. Huntington Ingalls Industries up seven percent or 16 bucks. The downside, Booking holdings, holy shnikes out there, off 151 bucks. That's about 8% to the downside. Expedia down 35 bucks or 26%. Uh, U.S. Physical Therapy off 20. Roku off 15. Equinix down 11. So things to look at, of course, I want to look at what you want to uh, look at. But let's uh, first begin by taking a look at just the overall markets. Now, this first chart that I'm going to go to, you can do the same. Uh, when I say you can do the same, remember we talk about, or I like to share with you, the importance of understanding the global flow of capital, right? The where is money going to? Because for all those folks that are asking the question, can the markets continue to move higher, meaning our markets continue to move higher, here all I'm doing is taking the ETF. So I know that each of you can do this. You don't have to have access to the indices out here. So here are nine different countries that we can take a look at. In the upper right-hand panel, you can see the Dow. And the red horizontal line on each of these goes back to the 2018 high. So we're using basically the exact same benchmark for each of us to understand where it is that there is confidence in the world with regard to the stock market. So forget the, the news and everything that's out there. Where is it? Where is that global flow of capital coming to? So in the upper right-hand corner, well, here, let's just sum it up like this. The U.S., is the only stock market of these nine. And these nine, we're taking a look at emerging markets. We're looking at Japan. We're looking at Germany, Canada, China, India, Australia, and the UK. Obviously, there's other markets that we can go take a look at. So I'm just referring to this basket of nine out here. And you will see, if you didn't know, but you will see visually right here that it is the US that is certainly leading the charge. In fact, only Canada, Canada, so North America is really what we can say. Canada would be the next closest, and they're still a ways away from getting back to their 2018 highs out there. So if you're asking the question how or why, 
you can see it right here because this is where the confidence is at. Now, when I take a look at the global flow of capital, I look at these and I go ahead and break them down and take a look at how they're trading in all of the major currencies because that really goes ahead and becomes an eye opener. We won't do that right now, but this is because that's a chart that's more difficult for you to be able to produce because your software may not allow you to do those conversions like eSignal allows us to do. But here you can, you can do this and you can track this and you can visually see see where it is that the confidence is in the world look when it comes to um, when it comes to making a wager in essence that's what we do when we play these markets a horse race are you going to put your money down on the favorite or are you going to put it down on the long shot out there look in baseball in markets anything can happen said baseball and horse racing in baseball what team are you going to put it on? Yeah, you know, it's look here is I think it's just self-explanatory. Now, let's go to the next step out here. This we're trying to get the bigger picture because there's a lot of folks that will be out there and they start talking about, you know, the market's fairly valued, this, that or the other thing. What they absolutely miss is where is it that folks have confidence? You will put your money where it is you have confidence, whether it's going to pay off or not, such as the, uh, the, the, the horse in the horse race or the baseball team or the tennis player or the golfer or what have you. Uh, sure. But where is it that you've got confidence when you go ahead and put that money down? Now, we take a look at the S&P 500 or the Dow or take a look at all four. So here, and I've been sharing with you, look, the markets, and this is a monthly time frame chart, are still in a consolidating pattern. Well, and it's early in the month, and I don't know where November is going to end, where price is going to end. We're certainly in the favorable seasonal cycle out here but if we were to say that the month ended today on november 7th what we have is a breakout in the dow that's above a little rising trend line out there so i would have to say breakout is underway same thing inside the s p 500 the same thing inside the nasdaq down below and it's the good old russell that will probably give us that signal it's trading the cash indice at 1597 but I would say a close on a monthly basis above 1602 is going to signal to you that the breakout is underway inside the U.S. Forget about the breakout from the standpoint that price is trading above all other countries' um, markets compared to their 2018 level. That's just simply to be able to help each of us understand where it is that the money is flowing. The money is being put down on the leader on the winner out here and we may have a breakout that is actually underway so if we do have a breakout that's underway whereas what's the long-term prognosis uh, for some of these indices if we just take a look at the s p 500 my belief is that the bull market that we are in began in 1974. yes we have had a handful since 1974 of bear markets Another interpretation of a bear market can be nothing more than a correction in a move higher. That's exactly what we have going on. Why 1974? Look, folks, if you go back and you take a look at the Dow, I'm just going to take the Dow back to 1974. And there's folks out there, Victor likes to think that the market's going back to our 2009 areas because of an open gap. I would say, Victor, then go look at 1975 because that's where the open gap is inside the Dow. That's where the breakout began, 1974. You're in that. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, back, uh, folks. So, uh, so it was actually the the gap took place in 1975. And I would not, Victor, if you're listening, I'm not picking on you. I just don't want you to get married or anybody to get married to the idea that gaps will get filled. There are plenty of gaps out there that we can find that do not get filled. So do not get married to that. So if the breakout or the breakout, if the bull market that we're in right now really began in 1974. Four. So I go to the lows of 74. I take in just the A to B equals CD pattern up to the highs in 2007. You have your basic Gartley or your basic Fibonacci retracement. That's a 0.618. The actual number was 60.07. That is close enough for me for a 61% retracement out there. Then what you can see is the 1 to 1.618. A to B equals CD is 3116. We're trading at 3092. Now that does not mean that this is where price stops. If anything, what this year is a yearly chart. So we're getting rid of a lot of noise out here. What this chart tells us where the S&P 500 is headed to is more likely 3694 at a minimum. If you take a look at the power off of the 2009 bottom, just simply in time, you see, the angle that's being used here on our C to D leg is the exact same angle that's used on our A to B leg. And when you see price like this move like it is off of that C point, it just tells us of a much stronger move, basically, versus 74 to 2007 versus 2009 to where we're at right now. So the bigger picture is, just step back for a moment. The global flow of capital continues to come into the U.S. You and I can prove that. We don't even need to be able to do currency conversions to do this. You can just take a look at this chart. You can do this at home. You can follow this to understand where the capital is going to. Well, if it's coming into the U.S. markets out there and we just simply and we can see that there may be a breakout that is underway, 
because we just look at just simply our rising trend lines. We take a look at the uh, Russell 2000 in its struggle at the 1602 level. Um, you get above that 1602, it just simply confirms the breakout. Now, we need a November close here. Stevie needs you need a November close. We st But, hey, we're early in November, so we have to play other patterns, which you and I are going to go ahead and take a look at. But the bigger picture is, and what we can expect, is things are not going to just fall apart, not just yet, and the markets have higher to run. Now, when we step back and just take a look at daily activity, here's what we know. There is no new profile inside the ES Mini. Yesterday, it looked like one was forming, and overnight, that vanished. There is a new profile inside the NQ. The top of its box is 8248. Watch 82.48. Right now, you're at 82.62. A close above that is a bullish message. Now, the Dow itself is well above its weekly area. The weekly um, a top of its box was 23. I'm sorry, 27, 375. We're 27,697 out there. So profiles are above their key levels out there. Now, these are all the bullish things. Are there things to be paying attention to and worry about? And the answer to that is, yeah, there's a couple of things. If we take a look at this, this is one thing to look at. Number one, if I look at the advanced decline oscillator right now, even during this jubilant celebration, there's problems out here because the advanced decline oscillator is below zero. It's at minus 826. Now, and you've got price that is rising inside the New York Stock Exchange. It's an unusual pattern. We can find other times when this exists out there. But should we see closes below the zero line out there, it tells us of an impending, some type of impending top. But it can go on for quite a while. It can go on, quite frankly, for weeks, if not months out there. It has in the past. But this is still, uh, this is still a a warning sign to say, you know, don't don't get to, we still have when we looked at longer term charts like yearly, as we just were doing noise becomes certainly weekly, monthly, daily time frame. So we'll look at those for other price movements, retracements, pullbacks, things of that sort out there. But so this is telling us a bit of caution, New York Stock Exchange. Now, maybe the advanced decline oscillator finishes above zero at the end of the day. I don't know. The second element that's out there, and I tuned in just as Basil was going off the air, but he made mention of this too as well, but not necessarily the same way. And that was the spot volatility index. Now, if you look on my screen at the very bottom right, what you're going to see is the, and this is all based on closing prices. November 1st, we're now November 7th. November 1st, the closing price of the spot fix was $12.30. Right now, today, we're trading at $12.64. So what we have at this stage here appears to be a higher bottoms pattern. And it's in the pri it's in the face of rising price. I don't have my, my diagonal lines drawn here, but you can visually see that. When those types of divergences exist, they tell us of an impending retracement, short-term top, something along those lines. So watch $12.30 from a closing price standpoint inside the spot volatility index out there. Okay, so that is the overall general markets. Are there any other things to be concerned with or look at? You know, if we look at the short-term roads momentum indicator signals out here, when I say short-term, I'm referring to a 30-minute time frame, a hourly, a two-hour, a five-hour. There are some short-term topping indicators, some roads momentum indicator signals in the ES and the NQ specifically, but not in the Dow or the Russell 2000. So we have a little bit of a diverging pattern there. So there are some short-term topping signals, but nothing that has broken through any key levels of support as we speak as of 124 in the afternoon. Now, there have been requests to take a look at other things. So the first request that came in was to take a look at Goldilocks out here. So if we go take a look at uh, gold, Obviously, I've been warning about this for a long time. Now, some people might say, well, why were you warning about this? It's been simple. We've covered it occasionally. If we take a look at, it's just it's just the patterns. I'm just a pattern guy out here, and uh, it doesn't matter to me what the symbol is. I'd have the same outcome. And if so, if we take a look at this, happens to be the weekly chart for gold. Creates a Rhodes Momentum Indicator change in trend signal bearish engulfing candle. You know how much I love Stevie's green line or red line, and price has been below it for the last two, four, six months out there, ever since that pattern formed, ever since that Rhodes momentum indicator top formed.
it told us about a significant top, even the kind of top that could take price down $200 more, down to $1,286. Now, we will take this one step at a time. This is going to be bar nine, it looks like, of a TD setup nine count. The low can occur, and this is a weekly chart, on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. This is November. It's very possible that the low for gold could be in November or maybe it's really December. So through these, through sometime in December out there. But this is one of the reasons why I have been suggesting extreme caution from the standpoint of just look, just simply use stops out there. Just use stops. Now let's go take a look at other areas of where price could be moving back to. Here we're going to use Stevie's synthetic contract so, uh, so that we can take a look at historical data. In this case here, we can take a look at daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly TAS market profile levels. Goldilocks. 1428 on the weekly, 1426 on the monthly, 1389 on the quarterly. Those are the downside price targets. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to switch over to uh, Palladium uh, for a moment for Ruby in the Tiger's Den, who's looking for an exit uh, point inside of Palladium. So, Ruby, uh, you know, we just took a look at uh, the weekly time frame chart for gold. We looked at the Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. We know that it's a reliable topping or bottoming signal out there. And when we take a look at Palladium, it very much looks like what we were looking at on the weekly time frame chart for gold. Now, this is the daily time frame chart for Palladium. And on November 4th, just a few trading sessions ago, price was moving higher, doing less relative energy, generates the bearish reversal candle. Now, what you've seen here is a nice counter trend rally in that move up to Stevie's green line. So that levels around 1785. You're at 1772. I don't know if you spend a whole lot of time trying to, you know, mince, um, you know, trying to get every squeeze, every single peso out of it. But 1785 is a level. And 1789.60 is the top of its daily profile out there. So to the extent you're looking to exit the trade, you know, you were there earlier in the day. I don't have anything to suggest that price can't get back up there or can't get up to 1789 or 1785, 49. Um, but uh, you're really close, I would say. So um, that's really what I've got for you there. Let's go to uh, John in uh, Philadelphia. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm uh, doing very well. Um, uh, thanks for all you do. Uh, to segue from your gold and palladium uh, yes. discussion, I wanted to ask if you'd pull up uh, your work on silver. Um, and ask you very specifically if you've got any numbers between 1690 and 1620 uh, that you would focus on for uh, targets, support levels that we might monitor if we get down to those for clues of bottoming action. Sure. So silver is an interesting is an interesting uh, chart pattern that we have out here. First, you 16, I believe, um, was it 90 that you said? So at yeah, I 16, gave the range of 1690 to 1620, and I won't go into why, but those are the yeah. numbers. So, so the what lines up for the most part with regard to those specific numbers would be the weekly time frame chart. And it's a bullish structured market profile. And 1643 or 1644 is the bottom of that weekly profile, and 1680 is the center. So those specific levels that you're looking at line right up with regard to the weekly time frame chart out there um, from a profile standpoint. If I look at my other chart patterns out here from the weekly standpoint, see what we see. We can see how uh, silver made a nice uh, TD setup nine count top. Uh, pattern out here. If price breaks through those areas, John, from a weekly standpoint, $15.10 would become the move out there. Now, what's interesting about silver as well is really the daily time frame chart. So silver right now is slightly strong. Well, I don't know if I can't say if it's stronger or weaker. I'm not going to go there. When I take a look at silver right now, it's still holding $17.10. $17.10 is where silver broke out on August 23rd. Now, I say broke out because I'm using, to determine that breakout, I'm using the TD9 count pattern where we have nine, as you know, nine consecutive closes where each close is above the close four bars earlier. And uh, and I like to use those as price pulls back to support or a breakout level. We can see how the last time that silver made a run to the downside, it was on September 30th. There was a close below it just for what basically was about an hour or two, I believe, or a couple of hours. In the very next trading session, we had price move back above that area. So price right now, the, the, a place to watch for those lower prices to come at you that we were taking a look at would be some close below 1710. And two bars, I would say, two bar closes below 17.10. Then that offers a lower price out there, which could be in that 16.40 to 16.80 area. So that's what I see when I take a look at silver. Does that help you out? Yeah, that does very much. I, I thank you. I'll just share with you. You and I've talked this before, but your your listeners might be interested. Uh, going all the way back into 2013, gold and silver had suffered uh, setbacks between Labor Day and Thanksgiving uh, each and every year. And, uh, and of course, we're doing the exact same thing now. 
Uh, I will be very interested the closer we get into Thanksgiving, uh, crossing my fingers that this uh, decline actually extends a touch lower in both price, but more importantly in time, to see, uh, see for clues of bottoming, and I'll use those numbers off your Silver Weekly chart, so I thank you. Perfect, perfect. Okay, great. Hey, and thanks for sharing that as well, and uh, as and, and calling in as uh, also. That uh, was John in Philly. Um, so our next question out here is, uh, was uh, platinum. So platinum uh, was also, the, we, we covered palladium. So let me go to uh, platinum out here now. Uh, let me get back to a different uh, set of charts. Oh, that's not right. So I think platinum is, is January. Is that where the... Uh, Give me a second here, see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, so it is January is the uh, is the current contract. So let, I don't know if I put that in there or not, but let's find out. I did not. So, Ruby, all I've got out here for you on platinum, and I don't recall what your question was, my apology, um, but here's what we know about platinum right now. And I'm really looking at the weekly time frame. So that's your right-hand panel chart out here. If uh, if you're looking for an entry point, you're looking for 906.60 to hold. You've got price below the daily profile today. That's 917.40. Uh, you're long this morning. So your key level to be watching is 906.60 because you do have price below the daily profile out there, which was 917.40. So that's another level that you would like to see platinum move above. But 906.60, I would say, is the area for you to be watching. That is the bottom of that weekly profile. So I hope that that uh, helps you out uh, as well. Um, we've got a question coming in asking us about an actual, well, it's a sector, I believe, inside the market, LRCX, but let me go find out. And this question is coming in from James. So LRCX, and the question is, hey, Steve, we'd like to know what you think of LRCX for short-term trade. Oh, LAM Research is the ticker symbol. So here's what we know about LAM Research. Um, you know, if you're going to be buying it now, you're going to be buying it up at highs. So you're asking for a short-term trade out here. Uh, let's put up Stevie's other chart, see if there's any signals, because these signals are pointing to nothing but bullishness, meaning prices trade above their daily, their weekly, and their monthly profile. So let's go take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, James, see if there's any pattern uh, you know, that we see. There's nothing out here that shows me a top just yet. Let me just do a quick uh, Chapman wave count from there. Okay, that's not it. So, um, looks like this might be the low here or this. Um, okay, so the daily, I don't, well, let me go look at the weekly time frame chart. You know, I don't know, James. I mean, I, I just don't know your style of trading. Um, out here. The weekly, this looks like it wants to continue to move higher. Uh, ideally, what you'd, what you'd see is some type of a pullback, some type of retracement. And right now, inside of uh, LAM Research, I'd have to say it's about 241 bucks or 275 and I don't have any signal to say we're going to get back there or it's going to get back there. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So Chris B. writes in, and even though we've covered silver, Chris's question is, uh, where do you think silver will be priced at in April of 2020? I may be good. I'm not that good. <laughs> so uh, here's, here's. I just think, uh, Chris, you just got to, we have to just take this stuff one, one day at a time, one step at a time out here. The next step inside of silver we had talked about, I think was like right around 17 bucks, even Stephen, somewhere around where silver had broken out. So we already took a look at that. We know right now that silver is trading below the bottom of its bullish structured daily profile. That's 1712, we're at 1704. So you want to watch that 1712 area. Two closes below that are what's going to suggest the areas that John and I in Philly were talking about, which was 1643 to 1680. The weekly chart is also a bullish structured profile. Assuming no other profile forms, a close below 1643. Um, says lower price from a profile standpoint, then that could take you into the $15 area out here, 1490 to 1502, somewhere right around there. So, but we just have to take this stuff one step at a time. I know that you would like to put on some call options or spreads or whatever it is you might want to do, but I, I just can't see that far out. Now, what I can share with you, I thought the ideal setup when we looked at uh, gold and we looked at the uh, weekly time frame out there, I'm going to just pull gold back up here with regard to its profiles. But when we put all that up there, the, the ideal setup was and I don't know that we're going to have this now, was that we would have gold pull back into the end of January. See, the markets also do that, the markets being the equity markets. And, uh, and that would start the next leg of the bull run, both in metals, precious metals specifically, gold specifically, and the equity markets. That was the original um, thought behind, because if you, if you go back and you study gold historically to the extent that you can, you will see that in real bull market runs, you've got the Dow moving higher and you've got, the, uh, and you've got gold moving higher as well. Uh, so and based upon what we looked at and began looking at at the beginning of the show, that's really how I kind of put together my larger picture and anticipating. But to know where gold is going to be at in April, I, that's just uh, beyond my skill set out there. I'd like to have that skill set, uh, but I just simply don't. 
but thanks for writing in. Tim writes in, he says, can I suggest a price for uh, the S&P to add to positions? You know, so here's the, I would be on some type of a pullback. We're, you know, we're experiencing a little bit of a pullback right now. Of course, that is initially brought on by a roads momentum indicator signal. This coming from our short-term timeframes. If we look at the bottom that formed out here uh, back around 12 noon yesterday, it was with the roads momentum indicator bottom. Right now, we've got a confirmation of a, a top out here. Um, but what price has done is done what it's supposed to do, which is sellers are pushing price back to support. If you were short-term trader the level to have bought is at 3089 we're trading at 3090 right now and the reason is because that happens to be the bottom of its bullish structured 30-minute TAS market profile ideally price will pull all the way back to where it broke out and that's at a price level of 3071 but that's just the short-term trading aspect you know what's it look like on the daily time frame here's what you have to be prepared to do Tim you, you can go ahead and, and, and take take add to a position out there and you need to be ready to jettison that specific position uh, if we see some type of bearish reversal signal inside of the ES mini or the S&P 500 bearish candle why because of the A to B equals CD patterns that are underway out here remember initially we talked about big picture what's going on we eliminated noise by just simply going to daily time frame charts and to help you understand what the markets are doing in the US versus what's going on around the world then you can understand where there's a concentration of capital that's what can push things up so those folks that are value based that say you know the ES the S&P can only trade at a certain amount of uh, uh, earnings ratio out there they're nuts they're just absolutely nuts, and you can tell them I said so. You've got to take a look at where money is flowing into, not sit there with regard to some of these historical, well, does the S&P doesn't trade much about 17 times earnings are out there. Or what have, I, that's just, that's, that's, so, that's so disingenuous. At least that's what Stevie believes. And you can tell I have some conviction behind that. So here what you've got, Tim, is you've got an A to B equals CD to the upside, two of them, inside the ES Mini. Uh, you're at the one to two level on the smaller one. That's the red one. The larger one, which is the black uh, A to B equals CD, gets you up to 3105. Do you, you know, we're at 3089 right now. Um, look, two patterns have failed. Two topping patterns have failed. The TD setup nine count and wave number seven, letter G out there. So those two uh, topping signals are off of the uh, table. Uh, but if there were to be a bearish reversal candle, that would then take price down to 3061, or should take price to 3061. That is Stevie's green line out there. And if price can close below that, then you're looking at 2998.75. And to the extent you were looking at a larger portfolio, a longer term aspect, it would be 2998 versus what Stevie's using on his 30 minute time frames out there. So that's uh, hopefully that answers your question with regard to the ES mini or the S&P. You asked about the S&P, but basically we're talking the same uh, language out here. LB writes in and says, um, I'm looking to get back into UNG. Can I give you a target price to do that? So let's go take a look at natural gas, see what it's uh, doing right now. So here is the December contract for natural gas. That's what you and I must look at if you're going to go ahead and trade UNG. And at this stage here, Lee, the first price to look at is going to be $2.68. And the reason is because what we have here is we have both an A to B equals CD to the upside. We have the completion of a sell the D point. That happened yesterday when the uh, natural gas contract generated a dark cloud cover bearish reversal candle. Today, what we have is follow through to the downside. You also, two days ago, had a TD setup nine count. So there's two topping signals inside of natural gas. And so in this case here, you've got to be careful. But the first downside test, assuming that we're going to use a daily time frame chart to make that call, is watching for price to test Stevie's green line. Now, we know that that phenomena occurs when the line changes color, which it did a couple of weeks ago. We still haven't seen that test. Now, with these topping patterns, it increases the probability, the odds, uh, Lee, that we're going to go ahead and see price move back into that area. So we're not looking at profiles. We're just looking at $2.68 as being one of the places to look. If we do go look at profiles out here, 
see if we can get those up on our chart for you. Uh, here we go. Here's the December contract. The profiles for the daily time frame, uh, all the way down to 250. You got 268 on the weekly. So I don't know that they're of as much help to you and I right now. Stevie's green line, that's the number to be watching. And what you're looking for there is a test and rejection of that level out there. Hector writes in and says, hey, Steve, if time permits, uh, can we take a look at SQ, ticker symbol SQ. So let's go take a look at that. That is, I believe, square. And we'll read the rest of the question as soon as I get all these charts here going. And the question is, has Square set a solid bottom or is it a floppy drive bottom? A floppy drive bottom. That's new. Right now you got uh, Square trade at 64.77 and it did form a nice Rhodes momentum indicator bottom back on September 27th. We'll be right back. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back. So Hector was asking the question about uh, Square. Here's what we know about Square right now today, Hector. Trading above the top of its daily profile. That's at 64.07. Uh, and in fact, if this week Square can close above the top of its weekly profile, that's 64.80, just six pennies from where we're trading right now, that's going to suggest to you that higher prices are coming at us. So we looked at the daily time frame chart for Square. That had a nice Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now, if we look at the weekly, we're going to see... That when square bottom, it did it with a TD setup nine count pattern. 
price is above Stevie's red line, that's at 62.59. And if price closes above the weekly profile out there, this says that the square will run or could run up to 83.20. That is where it broke down on the weekly basis. And from a daily standpoint out here, the daily standpoint, the breakdown level, yeah, I don't have the breakdown level here. Um, yeah, I don't have a breakdown level that we would use. So, Square, you asked the question, is it put in a uh, solid bottom? Uh, the answer appears to be yes with regard to SQ. Uh, you had another question. OAS was the uh, ticker symbol. That is uh, Oasis Petroleum out here. Um, has that put in a good bottom? Uh, price here is, um, you know, testing the bottom of its weekly profile out there. It's below its uh, monthly uh, profile-wise. Doesn't look as good. Uh, Stevie's other tools on the daily time frame out here, I don't have a, I don't believe I have a bottoming signal. I take that back. Oasis forms wave number seven, courtesy of the Chapman Wave. I hear he's doing a webinar. You ought to sign up for it if you haven't attended one of Basil's workshops out there. A uh, wave number seven, that's letter G. So uh, this has got a bottoming signal out here. Quickly, how about the weekly? That didn't look good from a profile standpoint. What do we have? You've got a Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. If you get a bullish reversal candle today, I'm sorry, tomorrow, by the end of day tomorrow, uh, Oasis should uh, move higher to where? Let's give it a price target of 381. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for all the questions. Thanks for those cards and letters. I'll look forward to seeing you on Fantastic Fabulous Friday. But stay tuned. Two great hours are coming up next. Your favorite polar bear and then Tom O'Brien from 3 to 4. Have a terrific Thursday.